Hi there, I'm here today to talk to you about the formation of a bar. Now on the left hand side on the image you can see an example of a bar and this particular bar is located at Slapton Lay in Devon in the UK and for context you can see where that's located in the UK on the map on the right hand side. Now this diagram here shows uh, an image of the coastline before the bar has formed. So what we've got is we've got the sea located out here. We've got a beach, a deposited landform, remember a beach that's located along the cliff face. And we've got our cliff face here, our, our, our coastline essentially along here. Now along this beach, we've got a change of coastline. We've got this formation of a bay. Okay, we've got a bay that's formed here. And that's very important. So if you've looked at my videos on longshore drift and the formation of a spit, the formation of a bay is very, very similar to the formation of a spit, and it utilizes the process of longshore drift. So I'll run through that very quickly now. Now, the most important idea with regards to longshore drift is the prevailing wind. Now, the prevailing wind is the most common wind direction that you find at a specific location. So our prevailing wind in this example is following these arrows, it's coming from this direction here. Now what that means is that the waves, okay, the waves at this coastline, are going to be running up onto the beach that are at an angle um, equivalent to the direction of the prevailing wind. So the waves are coming at the same angle as the prevailing wind. So that means that our coastline, any sediment is going to be moved up onto the beach at the same angle as the prevailing wind via the swash and brought back off the coastline through the process of the backwash perpendicular to the coast as a result of the gravitational force. And that basically, or the, sorry, that process repeats itself over a period of time, which essentially results in longshore drift shifting sediments down the coastline in this direction. Now, at our changing coastline, at that point where the bay begins to form, we get further deposition. So that material is shifting down the coastline via longshore drift, and at that point in changing coastline, we start to get a further accumulation, a further development of sediments. Now over time, this sediment continues to accumulate and deposit to form a spit, which eventually over time infills across the entire extent of the bays, uh, the entire entrance of the bay, up until it meets the upper opposite headland, uh, at which point it dams the bay and forms what we know as a bar. So what I've just drawn across the bay's entrance is what we would refer to as a bar. So this landform that we've just talked about um, and that landform there is what we term a bar. Now if we look at what I've labelled, I've labelled this now as an old bay. This was the bay but because it's now um, not exposed to the, uh, to the sea, not only the influence of salt water on the sea, the bay is now dammed. Okay, so the bay is dammed and we now term that a lagoon and this area will eventually infill by the process of deposition. So that is the formation of a bar. Very similar formation uh, to the formation of a spit, but the spit extends across to meet the opposing headland, at which point we get a blockage. It blocks the entrance to the bay to form a bar across this entrance.